what's going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to the progressive action tv show now we're gonna start it off with some quick progressive action advertisement as you can see i got on the hat i got the black hat with the gold arch that's the classic um progressive action hat we got the um the red snap back with the uh blue arch we got the the navy blue with the blue arch to match your uniform if you want to wear it too and from work and shout out to renana Burnett. she got a um gentrify my paycheck t-shirt it looked fire if you want any of this progressive action clothing you could go to perfidel.com that's p-e-r-f-e-d-e-l.com now let's get into some um transit news real quick not even transit news state news as you see cuomo signs law barring discrimination based on religious attire or facial hair now what i find funny about this is that right here in new york city transit a uh, 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 agency that cuomo runs workers are having the same exact issue here i talked about it a few months ago in the construction flagging um department division they also conduct this the muslim brothers there was forced out of the program because they didn't want to cut their beards off or because the mta did not want to provide uh, an alternative mask for them so they was forced to leave the program because of that now cuomo comes and tries to save the day and 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 you know he, he's just trying to appeal to more voters but He's not even addressing the issues right here in New York City Transit MTA regarding the same thing, religious attire or facial hair with the Muslim brothers that was kicked out of construction flagging. Um, we looking to pursue this issue even more, possibly sending a letter to his office telling him that he doesn't know what he's doing at all because we having those same issues right here. Now, we go stay on the Cuomo's for a second. I want to play this video of uh chris cuomo and his altercation with someone somewhere outside regarding the word fredo let me play this video for you guys real quick i thought, that, I thought, I thought that's who you were huh? no, punk ass bitches from the right call me fredo my name is chris cuomo i'm an anchor on cnn oh, you're much fredo is from the godfather he was that weak brother isn't that your and they use though? it as an italian aspersion any of you italian Little, you I got, I got a it's a bit. fucking insult to your people. It's an insult to your fucking people. It's like the N-word for us. Wow. Is, that, is that a cool fucking thing? You're a much more reasonable guy in person than you seem to be on television. Yeah, but if you want to play, then we'll fucking play. If you've got play, something man. you want to say about what I do on television, then say it. But don't be the fault me. Hey, man. Insult. Hey, listen. What? what? I don't want any problems. Bro. Yeah, you're going to have a big fucking problem. What's the problem? It's a little different on TV. Don't fucking insult me like What's that. I didn't insult you. You call me Fredo. It's like I call you punk bitch. You like that? You want well, that to be I, your nickname? I didn't call you that. I, you I, called I, me Fredo. You I know thought, my name's not fucking Fredo. I thought your name was. You did not think my name was fucking Fredo. Don't be a liar. I you want to be a man, stand, stand up like a man. I'm standing up, man. You want to be a man out yeah, here. Then up. fucking own it. Then own what you said. Hey. Then own what you said. Listen, Take man, I don't have what? a problem with you, man. Yeah, you're going to have a fucking problem. What? What are you going to do about it? I'll fucking ruin your shit. I'll fucking throw you down these stairs like a fucking punk. Please do. You don't want to You don't want to So you can fucking sue? Well, why don't you do it? Go take a swing. You want to call me Fredo? Take a fucking swing. Swing take a fucking swing. Watch your fucking hands. Watch your fucking hands. Take a swing. No, no, come on, boy. Come on, boy. You want to call me shit? Call me shit. Hey, listen, man. I'm right fucking here. I'll fucking wreck your shit. I'll fucking wreck your shit. Stop. You didn't actually drink. You didn't know what you were doing when you called me. I thought it was your name, man. Get up now. I thought it was your name. You didn't know, right? Hey, you didn't know what you were saying, right? I thought it was his name. I'm breaking it up. I'm breaking it up. This is my buddy. Hey, look at all these cameras. You're in for it. You're in I'm for it. for what? You're you in call for me it. fucking Fredo? You're in for it. You call me Fredo? You're in. I, thought that, I, thought, I thought that's who you were. Oh, fuck Shout out to Chris, Chris Cuomo for taking a stance. Let's go. <laughs> he took a stance on this thing right here, man. This whole Fredo issue. Let me see something real quick. Uh, yeah, he took a stance on the whole uh, Fredo thing and you know, I I I I, I want to get it, but I can't get it. You know what I'm saying? Because Fredo was from like a fictional um, character in a movie, and 
it don't make no sense how Fredo can be related to the term the N word. You know, even when he, if you listen to his his narrative and this whole thing, when he said um, when he said Fredo, let me see something real quick. When he said Fredo, um, he ain't say the F word. He said Fredo. How can you compare the N word on any level? to Fredo you know the n-word comes with real life oppression marginalization racism not no imaginary fictional um bs like if he want to say Fredo is is whatever Fredo is this Fredo is that Fredo is like calling someone Pookie from New Jack City or calling someone Ezel from um from Friday you know it, it has nothing to do those two don't have anything to do with each other. You know, it's, it's, it's BS. And, but what I did like, I, I, I like that he took a stand for what he believed in. I think that's very important that, you know, he took a stand for what he believed in. And, uh, you know, he let the guy know that that's not what he, what he going to be standing for. And us as the people, I think that we need to take that same stance even when the word is not being said, but when we treat it like that, I think we should have take that same stance. And even if it means taking a stance against, you know, uh, Chris Cuomo own brother, because, you know, he treat us like trash right here in um, New York city transit. And just to show you guys that I'm not biased. I just shouted out Chris Cuomo. Cause you know, he's a CNN on, on, on I mean, an anchor on CNN. I shouted out his show. Last month, because I like the show. I watched the show. Let me see what's going on with this. All right. The sound is back. Um, I watch I watch his show. You know, it's a good show. I think he should do an interview on his brother. You know, on how evil his brother is. You know, um, but Chris Cuomo. Get the fuck out of here! No way possible you could compare Fredo to the N-word. Get out of here with that BS. And more and more news. This was just today. This is what I like about the show. I could go live and I could do whatever I want. Just today, two pressure cookers was found near the Fulton Street station, inside the station. And service was disrupted. Crazy trains bypassing that station. You know, things was a mess down there. Now, this is the issue that I have. Who is purposely leaving pressure cookers in the subway system? To me, the MTA is not being um, honest, 100% honest. Uh, the, the, the NYPD is not being 100% honest on, on any of this. Um, hold on, let me do this real quick. On any of this. And uh, who, like, who's deliberately leaving pressure cookers in the subway you know to me this seems like a dry run for something else and they aren't just being transparent with us i think that whoever's doing this is checking out the nypd or the real first responders response time um to these ish to, to this serious thing that's going on this isn't the first time that it has happened um if you remember back in uh if you remember back in like two, three years ago, um, a pressure cooker did go off in the subway and one went off above level. They traced it back to some guy in Jersey. He had a shootout with the police. Um, I think he got sentenced last year to multiple life sentences or whatever the case is. But this is serious to me. And, you know, I work underground. I have family that travel underground and friends. Uh and I don't feel that the powers that be are, are is really being honest with us regarding, you know, this, this these pressure cooker situations. In my opinion, I think it's a dry test run for something that's more serious to come. And I hope it doesn't. But um, this is this is just crazy. Um, you know what's going on. So to my coworkers out there, the cleaners, station agents, train operators, conductors. And whoever else passed through the system, please remain vigilant. Please remain safe. If you see anything unusual, please bang it in and let the powers that be handle it. The people who's trained to uh, handle these situations, handle that situation. 
Now moving along, we got this big whole Jay Z uh, thing going on, and you know I posted it in the group, and it just took a mind of its own. Now the issue that I have with um, this whole Jay Z thing is that people is blaming Jay Z. Jay Z is an NFL player. He's a, a a a black man who came from nothing. Right before our eyes, he wasn't given anything. He hustled for everything that he has. He own he ha- he has. Um, so you have to respect that to some level. And some people don't respect you know his his business acumen for some strange reason. You know, uh, it boggles my mind. But let's take Jay Z out of this picture with this whole um Colin Kaepernick thing in the NFL. The NFL have a union. They have a players union. And as far as I'm, I understand, you know, a union is supposed to stick together, especially with issues that affect them. Uh, why didn't his coworkers, Colin Kaepernick coworkers, stand with him when he took this stand against the NFL? The truth is, if the players would have stood with Colin Kaepernick and not only the black players, all other nationalities and races, would have still with Colin Kaepernick, the, especially the ones who believe that there is a racial injustice within the NFL. I don't think Jay Z would even be a factor in any of this. I truly don't believe Jay Z would have been a factor in any of this if the people he works with, his coworkers, the other players, would have said, "Hey, we're not doing X, Y, and Z until X, Y, and Z or A, B, and C is addressed." We're not going on the field. We're not practicing. You know, the onus is always put on people who's watching. Like, why should the fans stop watching if the players are still playing? If the players really care about the issues, then they should have took a stance and said, hey, look, we're not doing X, Y, and Z until A, B, and C happens. And that would have been the end of that. That would have been the end of that. It wouldn't have been, oh, you know, we, I'm watching the NFL or I'm not watching the NFL. There wouldn't be no NFL to watch if the NFL players would have took a stand um, regarding this, this issue. And it's the same here in New York City Transit once again. There's, there's not going to be a Jay-Z that's going to come save us and save our day and, and work with management and, and the union and try to figure out how to solve the injustices that happens here. If we want to solve the injustices that happens here, we have to face the man in the mirror every day. And that's you. When you go to wash your face, brush your teeth, get dressed, or whatever the case may be, you must face that man in the mirror. So if we want change, we can't look for no Jay-Z. We got to look for change within ourselves. And that's the mistake that the MT, I mean, that's the mistake that the NFL made, um, the players made, was they was looking for all these outside entities to 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 help them with their fight no if you want help with your fight you must lead the way and i guarantee you people will come along and get on board i'm kind of disappointed um with the nfl players you know it's, 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 it's pretty disappointing to me now the next thing we're going to get into is this whole samuelson thing and how does this tie in to What's going on with our union? For the people who don't know, John Samuelson is the international president. He came from Local 100. He was the president of Local 100 um, before Utano. He actually appointed Utano. And it's important that we see what's going on here and the damage that he's causing in the international. So we, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of the background, video background. I'm going to play these videos in order. I'm going to, to explain these videos. And... um. Stay tuned. The fact of the matter is that you have a business plan and you describe that business plan to me and that business plan um, is, is, is now you're in, trying to implement that business plan off of a 2003 concessionary deal in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. You were given broad um, management prerogatives that you never had before by a bankruptcy judge, even though at the time you had billions of dollars in the bank. You just yourself said that you made $300, million, $300 billion last three, year. Three billion dollars. Okay, so three billion. You've done this with all of the concessions that you grinded out of us through bankruptcy and through that concessionary deal, 
And even with that, you're still making $300 million, billion. So what is the desire on your part to increase that profitability? Right. You're, you, you're, you intend to execute work rules, scope changes that would allow you to increase dramatically off the $3 billion that you're making off the backs of your unionized workers. And that's never going to happen. Where, where I stand here to tell you in front of this whole room, in front of everybody, anybody who's listening, that you're not going to get what you want. And if this erupts into the bloodiest, ugliest battle that the United States labor movement ever saw, that's what's going to happen. You're already profitable enough. You compare your profit level to United, you compare it to Delta. Com start thinking about your own workforce. Don't think about where you're at in terms of profitability and relative to other airlines in the industry. Three billion bucks, and you're looking for more concessions, and these concessions are off of our backs. That's simply not happening. And you said a very interesting point before about mediation, negotiation, and perhaps we'll get to a point where there's self-help. And I'll, I'll leave you with this. I don't intend to keep the microphone. If we ever get to a point where there's self-help, we are going to engage in absolutely vicious strike action against American Airlines to the likes of which you've never seen, not organized by airline people, but organized by a guy that came out of the New York City subway system that's well inclined to strike power and who understands that the only way to challenge power is to aggressively take it to them. So I hope that we get to the point okay. of release. I doubt that'll ever happen. But if we do, we're going to shut this place down because we're going to defend our members. We're going to defend future generations of workers that want to be employed just in a way Victor suggested, our children, our grandchildren. Not all of us go to college. Not all of us become CEOs in the airline industry or CFOs or CSOs, whatever you are, or business plan. You're going to have to run over our scope protections, and we're not going to let it happen. So I think the quicker that you realize that and the quicker you get back to the bargaining table and have a serious conversation within the confines of the knowledge that I'm never going to sign a crappy agreement that actually sells everybody down the river, it's never going to happen. So I think that you need to take what everybody here is saying very seriously, and I and every union person in this now that, room. That was a that was a little bit of his BS video. You see, it's it's exciting to watch. It's it's it, it gives you hope. It's like yeah, we got a fighter, and and you know it, it puts false hope into the people that's that's watching and the people that's that's he's fighting for. When we know, you know, especially at Local One Hundred, we know that is BS. So after he said that speech, um, he came with this one. I'm going to introduce this, guy, this one to you guys. He came with this speech after um, that speech because he had got shut down by the courts. So we're going to get into this video. Now watch how his whole demeanor changed um, regarding this video. Check it out. I am making this video pursuant to the order of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Texas to stress the importance of fully complying with the TRO. The court issued a temporary restraining order on June 14th and a modification of that order on July 10th. Copies of those orders are on the association and TW websites and are posted on bulletin boards. It is imperative that we all, each and every one of us, completely comply with all the terms of this federal court order as modified. As you know, I'm the president international president of the Transport Workers Union. As a union official of the TWU, and also on behalf of the association, I am here to emphatically tell all of you to comply with the TRO and that we respect the requirements of the TRO. The TWU, the IAM, and the association do not support, we do not encourage any form of job action against American Airlines. The unions and their members must comply with these orders. These orders require that no one engage. Now we don't need to play the whole video to show you that his whole demeanor changed. He went from all this excitement, this 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 Hollywood hoopla, to that. You know what we just seen, and then as a result of Samuelson running his mouth, um, the judges, the judge sent out an order that they cannot do any kind of work slowdowns they cannot do anything that's going to impede service they will be fine um and it, it would just be it would just be nasty for them and i don't i don't like samuelson he put these these guys in the, in a position where they can't even fight they don't even have to tell the law 
and they can't even strike. That is like unimaginable of, you know, what went on right there. I don't, I can't even fathom how something like that can go down. Now, like I said, the, if you look at this screenshot I put up, um, it's from the international Twitter page, Transport Worker. It says, please read and comply. Like, how you go from all that energy to please um, read and comply? Now, this is another video, the last video I'm going to play of him uh, go back on his BS, feeding the people BS. So let's get into this next video right now. But Isom and Parker, who run this company, are absolutely appalling, disgusting poster children of corporate greed. Yeah. And I'll give you a, just a couple of points on that. I'm looking at a sign that was behind me before that said there's actually catering workers making less than 10 bucks an hour. In Dallas, right here in Dallas. Doug Parker makes $6,000 an hour. Six thousand an hour. He's got a ten million dollar mansion not that far from here, and maybe another four million dollar mansion not that far from that one. This is a guy that's totally out of touch with what it's like to have to work for a living, to have to put shoes on children and food on the table. They made three billion dollars last year in profit, and when we challenged that profit, they went to court and they had us enjoined. So right now, under the Railway Labor Act, we're under a permanent injunction by a federal judge right here in Texas. So our goals are modest. We want to protect the jobs on American soil, and that's absolutely our intention. So right now, I want, as on a bit of encouragement, I want to tell everybody here and our own members as well in the Transport Workers Union that we have every intention of complying with that judge's order every intention of complying with the injunction and within the confines of that injunction we will now we don't need to get America into the rest of this we could just tell samuelson get the fuck out of here i mean he's he's selling the people lies and false hope like to to everyone who's not in local 100 samuelson is a con man he's full of hot air uh he he, he could speak great he's the um, do not think that he's going to wage any type of war. He's all talk. Uh, he will put you guys in a predicament that he can't get you guys out of. Under his leadership, the Stand United leadership, we have uh, everything has reclined with us. Our wages, health care, discipline, everything has took a step backwards. He has failed to move us forward in a decade. And I think you guys should wake up in these airlines and demand more and demand answers and hold him accountable. <laughs> Need to definitely um, hold him accountable. I'm about to put y'all um, comments on the, on the screen in a second. We're going to get into, let's get into these assaults. Um, stop transit worker assaults, man. We getting our butt kicks out there. Nobody seemed to have an answer. Nobody seriously, um, trying to protect us it's all the smoke screen the mirror these 500 police that cuomo said he's adding is basically protecting the fair box that's the bus fair box hold on one second that's that's the um that's the 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 bus fair box the uh turnstiles you know that's what they really there for the rest of them is sprinkled throughout to act like they care but their main concern is the fair box make no mistake about it so we had Three assaults within this past week. Um, the craziest one was the um I shouldn't even be posting the New York Post. I, I'm I'm not gonna use their information no more. The posts have been trying to destroy us um recently. But an armed commuter chases after MTA bus to confront driver who left him behind. You know, an MTA bus driver who come to work to move the people shouldn't have to face guns um in our faces because people was not on time. For the service you know the service runs on time for the most part the people be late and then they get upset when they be left and things like that none of us deserve to have any type of weapon pulled out on us let alone a gun i really hope that this uh bus operator is doing well i checked in on him um you know he he, he said everything is okay right now but you know i'm quite sure he's still shaking up we don't come to work for that uh another 
assault last week was was uh directed at my friend Maylene. Very, very um uh good person, you know, state of herself. Uh she gave a passenger directions and you know he spit at her. You know, uncalled for, unprovoked attack. Um, another attack was, you know, a man smashes subway car, forces his way inside um, subway operator booth, still train keys. Now, for someone to steal the train keys, they must have worked here before. They must be a buff. They know a lot because you can't just pull a key out. Um, it's only a certain uh, way that you could turn, pull out the key. He has to know where the key is at. Like the average person do not know this type of stuff. And for them to know that, they obviously either worked here before, is above study trains or something like that. But the assault is uncalled for. Um, these assaults are happening more frequently, more brazenly, and they must end. Um, we are demanding, we're not asking anymore. We're gonna we we are demanding the union, TWU local one hundred administration, the MTA and the governor to take a stiffer stance on people who assault everyday hardworking employees of this city. We want you guys to take a harder stance. Let me get you guys um Facebook comments on the screen. Let me see what's going on here. Let's get you guys Facebook comments on the screen. Let me see if it's going to pop up. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, so uh it's 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 a crazy situation. We do not come to work to get beat up. We do not come to work to be the public punching bag because of service that we honestly don't have no control over. We don't control any of this stuff. We just move the equipment and we get the brunt of the assaults, the blame, everything, even from our own bosses like uh, Pat Foy, who obviously don't have a clue. And he's adding fuel to the fire with these assaults, with his, to, with his lies in the media talking about how much time we get off. I have never worked for a company that didn't defend their workforce. You know, you look at NYPD, they defend their workforce. You look at FDNY, they defend their workforce. And we talk about the bosses. You look at corrections, they defend their workforce. The MTA don't defend their workforce. And they contribute to a lot of the assaults here. And we need to tell the MTA. Get the fuck out of here! And get their damn act together. Now, while all these assaults are going on, you see the union. Look what they're saying. We're out in force at the Dominican parade as international president Samuelson joins President Utano and our union rank and file. Now, this has nothing to do with the Dominican parade. I don't, the African Day parade is this week. Um, I don't, no matter what parade it is, these guys say they are. We are out in force for a parade. When are when are they going to be out in force for the workers for these assaults, for the MTA abusing the employees? When they're going to be out in force for a contract fight? When they're going to be out in force for the discrimination between Long Island Railroad, Metro North, and uh uh. New York City Transit. When they're going to be out in force for women's issues? Uh, when they're going to be out in force uh, for tier six? When they're going to be out in force to address um, management discipline? They they out in force to things that requires no fight. That's when they're out in force. If you search the Twitter, if you search their personal pages, that's the only time that they are out in force. They are not out in force um for any other thing that requires a real fight. Oh, Nuke said they weren't out in force at the Pride Parade. Come on, we know why they wasn't out in force for that. We know why they wasn't, you know. Same way why they won't be out in force for issues that affect most most of the uh the demographic here. They wouldn't be out in force for that. It's, it's all it's all fake. It's all for votes. It's all to act like they care. What they what they what's that saying? Uh kiss bait uh shake hands and kiss babies that's all it's, it's all a game to these guys and we got to get them out of here we got to get them out of here now speaking now speaking speaking of fighting speaking of fighting just recently um 
Security guards. Check this out. I got to check this out now. Security guards were hired to give directions, hand out pamphlets. And we talking about the subway. Security guards was hired by the MTA to hand out pamphlets, uh, give directions, uh, patrol the platform, basically do four people, four departments work. That's uh, a traffic checker. They do that type of work. Station agent, wayfinders, they do that type of work. Conductors, we do that type of work. Um, you know, they basically, and, and security, they they dare to deter from the turnstiles too, the security department. You know, they, one company, one company came and affected four departments inside New York City Transit that TWU Local 100 represent. Four departments. Now, uh, they were, they were spotted at 34th Street, this picture's at 34th Street, he he oh, Heru Square, as recent as Wednesday, handing out pamphlets, roaming the mezzanine platforms, and giving directions. You know, I already explained whose jobs they were. Now, shout out, I'm going to shout out to um, uh, Stations, VP, Wichard, and crew. They did get out there to confront the issue, but why wasn't it a concerted effort with all the other departments that was affected? RTO, uh, Map Store, Map Store have traffic checkers and the security uh, department. Why didn't four VPs come together and address this serious issue? You know, they talk about us not having unity, but it seems like they don't have unity either. But once again, shout out to Wichard for um, getting to the issue and, and addressing the issue. I see that he had a few people with him and it looked like they was taking the stance out there. Now, I want to get into one of his reps' lies because the lies still continue as to what's really going on. So, um, Tommy Van Brunt asks Yolanda Liddell, she's an elected rep, can you enlighten the membership on this? And she said this was investigated by the union on its second day of operation. This firm was contracted to report on the homeless condition within TA. I would give you more information if, if needed. As you see in the picture, you see which out there. You see Tank. Shout out to Tank. Uh, and I don't know who the other gentleman is, but you see them talking with the security guard. Now, this is this is a plain lie. You know, it seems like they told them whatever and they believed it. If you look at any of the pictures with these security guards, if they was... Uh, contracted the report on homeless conditions where are they notepads where are they pens where are they data sheets everybody know that the mta is um a paper that's all they do is is paper 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 that's all they do so where is the data like is this is this being reported like by telepathic memory or something like that because i don't get it like how can you how can you even believe that that's the case you know it don't even make no sense that that's why uh you know that's the kill they they dare to do home they doing homeless at 34th street at a gap station if they was doing homeless any kind of thing it would be at the terminals and and they would start there at the terminals so to yolanda liddell sis let's stop with the lion and let's get it together all right be honest with the membership You know, it's it, it's a plain lie. You know, this is a company. The MTA still operate in the Stone Age. You know, and everything is paper. The security guards had nothing. No pen, no pad, no iPad, no phone. They didn't have anything. They just had pamphlets handing out MTA information about service and giving directions. You know, it's, it's a straight up lie. And the union has to take some type of stance on this because they can't keep running out addressing the security guard issue. This This says that management takes them for a joke like management takes them for a joke to continue to do this like they contracting our work out left and right they do not fear this administration at all and it's going to take a real stance to get management to respect this administration moving forward man like this is this is very 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 embarrassing now we're going to get into something that just happened recently let me see yeah we're going to get into something that just happened recently um with this child care fund thing now i have never used this before i'm eligible for it i should have been using it 
I never used it before, so I never really paid attention to it. So you have the child care fund. Um, people was being denied and putting on these waiting lists or whatever the case is. And it was explained that to another member that the child care fund is running out of money or whatever the case is. So they don't have as many vouchers as they normally should have. So first thing I'm going to introduce you guys to is the, the people who basically run the show here. And as far as I'm concerned, it's two people. Well, three people. Utano should be overlooking it. Um, Nicole Hecker, she's the acting director of the whole child care fund. We're going to get into her in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a second. And Jennifer Dodd, she's the person who actually um, write the grants and supposed to, you know, maintain the money and keep the income and money um, into this this child care fund. Now, it's um, could it be corruption? Could it be mismanagement? It's definitely one of the two. And even if it's not corruption and it's mismanagement, uh, people need to be held accountable for what they do. Uh, let me see something. I'm going to put a poll up. I'm going to put a poll. A poll should pop up on your screen right now regarding this whole child care fund stuff. And we want to get answers from the, the 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 public, the members, because we know this is a serious issue for you guys. Um, now, the person, like I said, who runs this whole fund, her name is Nicole Hecker, right? So her qualifications. Let me see if I could pull. I uh, no. Her qualifications to run this pro position. She's just a shop steward. She was appointed this position um, as being a shop steward. No real prior uh, experience in running the fund. And the only real reason that she got this position was because of her affiliation with Richie Davis and her relationship with Richie Davis is not a secret. You know, uh, that's why she was put in that position only because of that you know she she has no real qualifications to run this program under any circumstance uh miss hecker she makes over 136,000 a year now that salary is more reflective of an executive salary this child care fund thing is nothing but human resources her salary is too excessive 136,000 a year is too much money um for her to get paid for being an executive to to basically run the fund to the ground because that that's what is happening now. Um, like I said, her, her her salary should be more reflective of someone that works in human resources. So that's all that work is is just human resource work, and this just goes on to show you um, that the unions spend our money whichever way they want. Um, I believe that her salary probably comes from the child care fund itself, but that. Those extra thousands of thousands of dollars keep someone from getting a voucher. So I don't think that that position should require that much money. It's not an executive position. It's a human resource position. Um, another reason, you know, the fund is probably near depletion is because of the lack of grant writing. Now, like I said before, the person that's responsible for the grant writing is the woman, the sister and the black to your right, top right. Um, Jennifer Dodd, she's responsible for the grant writing. How much grant writing was really done in this program? This program should have millions of millions of dollars. Now we're going to get into the money inside the program and 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 all that other stuff. Now, um, right now we 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 are in a time where we can't keep up with the cost of living, rising rents, uh, everything is going up, but our salary. So every dollar that we could save as transit workers count. So whether you was getting the $160 or the $320, it was very helpful to every family that can receive it because we need all the help that we can get as transit workers. So a lot of members was upset. They hit me up and they was, you know, like I always say, members don't care until something affects them directly. And it revolves around money that they could see. Like if they have to kick out an extra $160 or extra $320 because of this pro this program being poorly ran or, or because of corruption, they're gonna be very upset. So they hit me up and it seems like they got their own their own movement going on where 
some IGs may be getting involved in. I don't know if the MTA IG, I didn't really inquire, but, you know, they seem to have their own thing going on. I know they have a MTA IG, which I think the IG can probably get involved because MTA dollars was involved in this fund. And you have the Department of Labor IG, which can get involved and investigate what's really going on here. And it seems like the members are moving towards one of those steps. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the show. It's good to see that um, members step up and take the lead on something that affects them. Um, but the bottom line with this is that this fund should have enough money to cover every member who needs it. This shouldn't be on a first come, um, first serve basis. This should be more of a whoever needs it, needs it because they don't collect our dues on a first come, first serve basis. Now, just to be clear, the money that the union collect from union dues do not go into the child care fund. That's something separate. That money has to be either given through um, the MTA or through grant writing. That's why it's so important that the grant writing part is critical to the operation of this fund. So, but a requirement to receive the funds, you must remain in good standing. So you're being in good standing, remaining in good standing means something to act to have access to the fund. So it's connected to our dues indirectly, you know, just to say that you're in good standing to get those um, funds, which makes sense. But the funds should be made available to every single person who needs it. Now, this next picture I'm going to put on the screen. This is from the 990 form that they report um, to the government. Now, I know you guys can't see it, but I'm going to read what's in the top rectangular box, the red, the first red rectangular box at the top. Um, the purpose of this program, according to the union, is to provide child care benefits to members of the union for the purpose of improving or developing the members individual capabilities and employment availability. Now, this is kind of strange because. Ever since, you know, the TA have been um, talking about employee availability and they want us to be shackled to the job more, you know, uh, be more available to work than our families. This is actually counterproductive to this because if someone can't find a babysitter or can't afford a babysitter, they go be tend to stay up, stay home. You know, a lot of a lot of members will be forced to take days that they don't have and it will affect the MTA availability all because of mismanagement or corruption in the child care fund. Now, uh, I want to see, I, I also want to know, it says the purpose of improving or developing a member's individual capabilities. I want to know more about that. But the second box, uh, the second box, uh, green box, the second rectangular box speaks to salaries and other compensation employee benefits. So uh, the people who's getting paid from this, their salary for the current year is $603,651. That's a lot of money. And, um, you know, to run that program, it's, it's a lot of money. Now, and and it's not really a lot of money, but it's a lot of money when you factor in the budget that uh, they are running off of. It's a lot of money. Um, now, the third box, and just to be clear, this, this um, 990 form is from 2017. The union, when you're dealing with these type of uh, funds and, and 501Cs, C3s, and, and, and uh incorporated businesses you only have to report basically like every three years in order to remain active so it seems like they do it every three years so the next one should be 2020 so this is the last one that we found regarding this information now the last box the last red box rectangular box at the bottom speaks to the net at the net at net assets or fund balances and total liabilities and total assets of the fund so basically the current year for that for that was um matter of fact let's talk about the year prior to that the year prior was 3.1 million dollars basically um the current year for after that year was 2.4 million so they lost about 700,000 dollars somehow i don't know 
how they end up spending, you know, 700,000 uh, more dollars for that. And uh, it seems like something is going on. The, the, the person who's responsible for the grant writing, I believe they have the most important and critical job. Maybe they have been slacking. Nicole didn't stay on it. Um, she wasn't paying attention. She's living her life free money. Um, a lot of free money, $136,000, egregious amount of money to do HR work once again. Uh, things need to be looked at. Now, I'm not ruling out corruption because this union has shown signs of being corrupt and, and, and doing things like that. And I have actually heard some things, but I'm not going to talk about because there might be an investigation on this. And I really don't want no body asking me anything or said that you said this, but um, there, there's, there seems like a mixture of, of the two going on up there, allegedly, allegedly, we're going to say allegedly. But there's another factor to this that, um, that needs to be examined. During our last contract, a lot of people may not know, is that the MTA gave the union $3 million dollars um, a one-time contribution of $3 million to the fund reserves. Now, another thing that happened during the last contract, and I'm going to read it straight from here. It's on the screen if you can see it. Um, the union and employers agree on or before 60 days after ratification to merge the training and upgrading fund, child care fund, and labor benefits account into a newly create, created um, combined trust. The new trust shall be jointly administered pursuant to a new trust document which will provide for the same purpose purposes as the predecessor trust as well as other lawful purposes to which the parties may agree now what you may see in 2020 is one big 990 paper the mta gave three million dollars to it so if this is the case and they actually went through with this and implemented this then that means that it's more people um in the pot so you have we're going to speak of the directors. You have, uh, for the child care fund, you have Nicole Hector. For the training and upgrade fund, you have um, Charles Jenkins. And I don't know, i never seen a labor benefits account. I'm going to have to look into that. But I'm quite sure there's another director to that. Now, who's to say that, you know, it wasn't some type of big-time mismanagement and, con and conspiracy or corruption within those people um, going on? But... Some it, it definitely needs to be looked at. It don't need to be looked at by the union administration. You know, these guys are are um they they are corrupt within it themselves and they wouldn't get rid of Nicole for the simple fact that she know where a lot of bones are buried at, you know. Um she 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 had a relationship with the vice president, and this is known, I'm not blowing nothing up, this is known, wi widely known. Uh and I'm quite sure a lot of pillow talking was going on with the corruption that was going on inside of there. And she knows a lot. So Utano and Samuelson is not going to get rid of her. Even though you hear of friction between Richie Davis and Utano and, you know, other people, they may be breaking up and splitting up and all this other stuff. You hear that going on. It's not a secret on that. Uh, they are not going to get rid of her because she knows too much. I can promise you that. If they get rid of her, I guarantee you it's going to be some under the table money, some quiet money for her to disappear and just be quiet. I guarantee you that they have did it before and they will do it again. But I guarantee you they probably would not get rid of her. They'd rather her get removed through some type of investigation that will probably lead to some type of charges or, or something going on. They would rather her get removed like that, but they would not remove her because she knows too much. And they don't know exactly what she knows, but they do know who um, she was affiliated with. And it will not be it would not be a good look if they get rid of her. And that's and that's the truth. That's the truth. They know. They know. Now, uh, moving forward. Uh, the union. I think his name is Amisha Bukan. They have fired this guy because he tried to organize an employees union. Now, um, I believe that he's Indian and he was claiming racial discrimination, how the black people inside the union, they were uh, they were uh, 
the black bosses, as far as Nicole and Charles Jenkins, they conspired against him. And then when they found out that he was trying to start a union, they basically got rid of him. They took away his 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 access um, to his job. Now he was the the specialist guy, the data specialist. He had access to all the emails. He ran the the the, the whole intel thing there. So he probably know where a few bones is buried too. And I'm actively trying to get a hold of him to see if I can interview him to see exactly what's really what really went on with this story. Uh, now. Uh, as far as him trying to unionize employees and staff employees, to be clear, staff employees are not transit authority employees. They don't belong to Local 100. They basically hire from the streets. Um, they could be family, friends of whoever. You already know how the nepotism and cronyism work. But to be fair, you know, they, they basically came from the street and they want union protection also. Now, why would a union get rid of people who want union protection? That makes absolutely no sense at all. And I'm going to put this on the screen. Exactly. This is a part of his court case. It says the plaintiff, Mr. Bacon, was forced out from his position with the TWU funds after 13 years due to racial discrimination and hostility and retaliation in the workplace by the defendants in response to Mr. Bacon's involvement in organizing an employee's union. Um. Now, the outcome of this case was it was supposed to be some type of mediation between Mr. Bacon and uh, the union, but he had actually resigned and they got rid of him. I mean, he, he resigned and he left or whatever the case is, but he was basically forced out. They took away all his powers. They was micromanaging him and, and things of that nature. But I would like to hear from Mr. Bacon regarding this. And, and, and someone else had hit me up and they was excited um about them i think they got a union now after he left they got a union but they was really excited as to what was um transpiring uh of them getting a union and and possibly getting a union before they actually got a union and uh i just find that i find that very 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 weird you know that they would get rid of um you know this guy for that but there's there's a there's a lot going on um within this local 100 and you just got to ask questions and investigate and get involved and hold people accountable. It really don't seem like this administration is fighting for us on any level. It's all fake. It's all smoke screens. Um, once again, if you pay attention to the whole Samuelson and his narrative now, make no mistake about it. I believe that Samuelson is a trillion times better talker and motivator um, than Utano. But Utano is cut from that same exact cloth, and there's no difference in the cloth that's that they are cut from. That's why Samuelson appointed Utano to um, be uh, the appointed president of Local 100, and then eventually getting elected. And whoever you whoever um, Samuelson put in that seat was going to win, except Earl. They already knew that Earl um, Earl running against another black man such as myself wouldn't be enough um one thing i could say about sam you saying he understand politics he understand the game he understand what to do and when to do it and what i'm saying is that he's not about that fight he has never shown us fight he has never fought for workers in local 100 he has never done any of that now i want to get into something new i'm gonna start doing quote of the week now um, before I do quote of the week, I want you guys to remember, you must share um, these broadcasts. Please share these broadcasts. When we get off, share it to your timeline. Start a watch party. Um, share it to the groups that you're in. Start a watch party. Um, put the link wherever you can find it. The more people who's educated on our issues, the more allies we will have. Trust me, that's how it works. If, if, you, haven't, if you haven't put people on to progressive action yet, Please add them to the group. Add them to Progressive Action. Um, donate to the movement. I put the donation link up there. You have a lot of people that say, oh, I follow you. I love what you do and all this other stuff. Then they get straight to it and say, I need help. Listen, Progressive Action don't run for free. This TV show costs a lot of money. The resources for this TV show cost a lot of money. 
Um, it's about time that you guys, if you guys really love what progressive action is doing, then you must you must donate to the movement. I mean, you guys give away money to the union every two weeks and don't hold them accountable. Unless, uh, at least with me, you guys see me, y'all could touch me, y'all could hit me up. You can't hit Utano up and get answers from him. You can't hit anyone up and get basically answers and consultation and, and things like that. The people that you can hit up, they getting paid. I'm not getting paid to do this. I don't have to do this. I do this because I love to do it, but this isn't free. You members, the members need to get involved and not only donate to the movement, but come out to the rallies, um, come out to the events, you know, do something, do something because I am going to start taking a stand on people who don't want to get involved. That's how we're going to do this here. But definitely, definitely, um, definitely get involved uh, with the, with the movement, donate to the movement and um, hold your elected representatives accountable. Now we're going to get into the quote of the week. Progressive action quote of the week is I am not afraid of an army of lion led by a sheep. I am afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. Now that quote right there is from Alexander the Great. It's a great quote. We go start doing this every week. A great quote. Thanks for tuning in to the Progressive Action TV show. We'll catch y'all later. Peace. <laughs>